Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to St. Margaret's Church. It's lovely to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. It's wonderful to see you in such good numbers this afternoon for what I think is one of our most beautiful and meaningful services of the whole year. So whether you're local or whether you're just visiting family here, you are most welcome, and we hope that this service uh, is really helpful for you as we think about Jesus, his significance, uh, both uh, in times past and to us still present. Just a word of explanation, I hope you've all got copies of an order of service here. If you open it up, you'll see the running order there on the inside, and you'll see that our service is a mixture of uh, items that are sung to us, also carols that uh, we sing together, and those are in red, and also some Bible readings that uh, recount that story of what happened so many years ago. So the idea really is that we remain seated for the items sung to us and for the readings, but we stand for all the congregational carols. Also to say that uh, the carols will all be projected on the screens around the church, so it may be a little challenge for you if you're on this side, it may be that you want to face that away so that you can see the words of the carols, uh, so that you can join in with them. If you find that at all difficult, uh, there are copies of the uh, hymn carol sheet at the door if you prefer to have one of those in your hands. But the service will be unannounced. It won't be sort of clunky from the front. We will just proceed as per the order of service in your hands. So may we just start with a prayer and then I will hand over to our first item from our singers. Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you very much indeed for uh, Christmas. We thank you for this annual opportunity to take our eyes away from just the events on the newspapers and television screens to think about what really happened 2,000 years ago when you sent your son Jesus to be our saviour, king and friend. So please may the ancient true story come alive under the power of your Holy Spirit this afternoon, for we ask it for our good and for your glory's sake. Amen.
The reading is from Isaiah chapter 9, beginning at verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord.
The second reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. <coughs> this is the word of the Lord.
The reading is Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born the King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. I'm going to frame our prayers around the message of the angels to the shepherds. So let's pray. Good news of great joy, a saviour has been born. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the good news of Christmas. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus to this earth 2,000 years ago to be born as a baby in Bethlehem. Thank you that he came to be our saviour by dying on a cross and taking the punishment for our sins so that we can be forgiven and have eternal life now and for eternity with you. Good news of great joy for all the people. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the joy of being part of your family. We pray that the light of Christ may shine from us to those who are in darkness this Christmas time. We pray for those who don't find Christmas joyful. We pray for those who are lonely or recently bereaved or sick. Holy Spirit, bring comfort to them at this time. We pray for those who are struggling to put food on the table this Christmas. And we pray for Little Hampton Food Bank and Sparkles here in Angmering that they will have sufficient donations to help those who are hungry. We pray as well for those who are homeless and for organisations like Turning Tides who can give shelter at this Christmas time. And on earth, peace to men on whom his favour rests. Heavenly Father, we recognise there will only be true peace on earth when we believe in Jesus Christ for salvation. But we want to pray for those parts of the world where there isn't peace due to man's hatred and greed. In particular, we pray for Ukraine and for Gaza, the West Bank and Israel. We pray for a lasting peace in these conflicts. 
We pray for comfort for those who have lost loved ones. We pray that food and shelter can be provided for those who have lost their homes and livelihoods. We pray that your love can be shown to these hurting people at this Christmas time. Glory to God in the highest. And we pray that in all these things you, our God in heaven, might be given the glory. Amen. The reading is John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world, and he was in the world. And though the world was made through him, 
the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jonathan. Let's uh, pray just for a moment as we think about this Christmas message. We pray, Heavenly Father, now that you would open our eyes so that we would see the wonderful light of Jesus. For his name's sake. Amen. I wonder what the biggest surprise in your life so far has been. Let me tell you about a lady called Emma Webb. She, this last week, had the surprise of her life. She was doing a 158-mile charity walk in honour of her late daughter, Brodie. When look who came and met her. Look on the screens to your right, and you might recognise that gentleman there in the anorak and the red umbrella. There's a very sweet clip of this on YouTube where you can hear Emma squeal with delight as she recognises Prince William, who then hugs her. Well, tonight, we're going to eavesdrop on a conversation, a meeting, not with Emma Webb, but with another lady who had the surprise of her life one day in a small town in northern Israel called Nazareth. Her name, as I'm sure you've guessed, is Mary. And a special visitor turned up in her home. This was an angel. And angels were, of course, messengers from God, sent by God from heaven to earth when he had something important for us human beings to hear. When an angel turns up, you don't carry on scrolling through Facebook on your phone. No, rather you hit the floor in awe and wonder. And the angel had a very important but simple message for Mary, and it was this. You're going to have a baby. So familiar to us, isn't it? But just think what reaction that would have produced in Mary. I guess it would have been something like this. <laughs> what? <coughs> Remember her situation. She was a young lady, probably a teenager. She was engaged to a chap called Joseph. And now she's being told that she would become pregnant long before the wedding cake had been made. How on earth am I going to explain this to my parents, to my rabbi, to my neighbours? What am I going to say to Joseph? She must have been thinking. Now don't get it wrong. God had shown himself over the centuries to be supremely powerful. He was fully able to help elderly, childless couples to conceive. Indeed, in the previous chapter of Luke's Gospel, we hear all about the way that Mary's cousin, Elizabeth, had been able to conceive, and she was no spring chicken. But what the angel was saying to Mary was something new. She would have a baby, even though no human father was to be involved in the process. I'm sure that all of you here in the church tonight or online have got birth certificates. Here's mine. Reckless of expense, I brought my birth certificate. And it shows that on the 25th of October 1963, a little boy called Mark was born in Wellingborough Hospital to Derek 
and to Pamela. There you go. If you're very good at maths, you'll be able to work out my age. <laughs> but let's not think about my birth certificate or yours, but let's think about the true birth certificate of this little child to be born to Mary. It would be very different, wouldn't it? Yes, it would reveal the name of this little lad. His name was to be Jesus. Yes, it would reveal the name of his mother. Her name, Mary. But the baby's true father is not Joseph, but God. God. God Almighty. This little tot to be born to Mary will be the one promised by God centuries earlier when God promised that he would bring to this earth one who would be a wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting father and prince of peace. This little baby, shortly to be born to Mary, will grow up and make the eternal God known to people. He will connect them to him and so make them citizens of God's kingdom. Well, my goodness, perhaps that makes you scratch your head a bit and think, how on earth is he going to pull that off? I can't even make the video uh, controls on my machine work. How is Jesus going to be able to pull this job off of connecting you and me and others to God? And I guess the answer is that this little one is going to be very different from us. He's not a mere human being like you and me. No, he will be God's own son, sharing God's eternal nature, God in skin, as it's been put, conceived in Mary's womb as God himself, through his Holy Spirit, overshadows her. Well, just think with me for a moment what this angel's message means for us today in the way that you and I are to see and treat the one to be born to Mary. Surely it means that we're to see him as a king. A king. The angel had been very clear about this, hadn't he? He'd said about this child, he will be great and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign and his kingdom will never end. This coming baby, is, says the angel, is going to be a king because he's going to inherit a throne and therefore he will be a king. And yet he'll be a king greater than his ancestor, David, King David, because this king, his kingdom, will never end. Human reigns always end, don't they? Many of us will remember last September when with great sadness we noticed the end of our late Queen's reign, and she had been on the throne the longest of all our British sovereigns over 70 years. But the reign of Jesus will never end. Perhaps we can imagine that throne on the screen with Jesus now on it, a Jesus whose kingdom will never end. Now he's up at God's right hand in heaven, and one day, all people everywhere will bow before him and say to God, your say to Jesus, your majesty. So I guess if we're thoughtful people, and I'm sure we are, this provokes a question in us, doesn't it? Is that how I see Jesus, a king on the throne, a king of ultimate power whose kingdom will never end? That's what God, through his angel, wanted Mary and you and me to know about him. Well, that perhaps is a familiar image for us, isn't it? Jesus as king. But I want us to try and think of perhaps just one other image for him tonight. This might uh, make you your sort of smile. But I think it's appropriate to see Jesus as being a paramedic. Now this term, we've had an Alpha course in church. This is a course for people wanting to explore the Christian faith. And on the little table I've been running, we've had three paramedics. So it's been a very safe place to study the Bible together. But these three ladies 
have explained to us all what they do in their daily job. And it's just breathtaking. They have to go into situations where they don't quite know what they're going to meet, often dealing with people who are gravely ill. It's very rare for them to go, as it was in America. Do you remember a little boy who asked, rang up 999 equivalent because he wanted a hug? That's not what most paramedics have to deal with, is it? They have to make instant decisions that will affect whether people die or live. Well, I think, you know, that's not a bad picture for us to have in our mind as we think about the one to be born of Mary. He has come as a divine paramedic to deal with our most pressing problem. And the problem that he's come to address is unveiled through the name that he is to be given. He's to be given the name Jesus. And Jesus means something. It means God saves. And this is so appropriate because the one to be born to Mary is going to save people from their sins. Now, sins is the sort of word, isn't it, that makes us retreat, perhaps step back a step or two because it's an unattractive, unsettling word. And yet it's a very important word for us to think about for a moment or two. Sins doesn't really describe the sort of saucy things that get into the daily papers. No, the essence of sin is to look at God in the face and say no. The God who made us, the God for whom we are made, deserves to be on the very throne of our lives. And yet so often, if you're anything like me, we can look at God, we can nod at him, we realise that he deserves a bit of our attention but we don't want him to be reigning on the very heart throne of our lives. Jesus wants to identify that trait in us because that, those sins, actually separate us from God. But the good news that we celebrate at Christmas in particular focus is that God doesn't just stand up in heaven wagging his finger at us like an aggrieved schoolmaster or mistress. No, God loves us, and so he chose to send his son down from heaven. And his son was not going to sort of be uh, behind reinforced glass in a gold carriage. No, he was going to enter into our mess, take the burden of our sins from us. And he did that, of course, when he would die on a cross that first Good Good Friday. An Australian friend of mine once put it memorably like this. Jesus, I'm not going to try the accent, Jesus laid aside the royal crown he deserved in order to wear a crown of thorns for us. It's quite deep, think about that. Deserves utter majesty and respect and he embraced suffering and humiliation for your sake and for mine. That is the sort of kind and generous God we have. So let's, as we close, let's think about what Mary made of the angel's message. The angel had taught her that the son to be born to her would be a ruler and rescuer. Well, how might Mary have responded? She could, as a late teenager, just have had a teenage strop and say, no, No way, Jose. Or she could, like Moses, many, many centuries earlier, have begged God just to get somebody else to take that role instead of her. But actually, she did neither of those. She said yes to God. And that's why she has got such an honoured place in the history of the church. And Mary's yes to God is recorded in order to encourage people like you and me to act in the same way towards God. To say yes to his claim to be our ruler. To say yes to his offer to be our rescuer. You see, the good news of Christmas is that there is still a window of opportunity for us to bow our knees before Jesus, our King, 
and to benefit from the healing medicine of forgiveness, power and hope that he offers to us. Be in no mistake, that window of opportunity will not remain open forever. So let's grab it with both hands. Let's say a hearty yes to God for his grace and mercy upon us. If we do that, then this Christmas will not just be a good one, but it will be a memorable one, the most important one we've ever had, for it will bring to us life in all its fullness now and a glorious future to come. Let's pause and think about that wonderful offer before we come to our next item.
Wonderful. Do please have a seat. Well, just before we have our final uh, prayer of blessing and we go and attack the mince pies and uh, refreshments over in the hall, just a few things, if I may, from the uh, order of service that you've got in your hands. Do please uh, take note there of the services that continue over the Christmas period on the front page. You'll see that the pattern is a little bit different from our normal uh, services uh, on next Sunday. So do please come to anything there, and particularly if you've got little ones, children or grandchildren, the Chris Dingle are very uh, helpful and uh, exciting services. And if you need any um, help at all with anything that goes on in the church, there's our website uh, number at the bottom there that uh, has everything you need. Can I just uh, ask you to turn to the back page, please, and you'll see details of two little courses there that we're running uh, during the course of uh, uh, the new year that uh, we've got a course called Hope Explored. That's just a three-week course. It starts on the 23rd of January and goes to the 6th of February. So it's just three, uh, three Tuesdays. And uh, that's just a chance. If anything tonight has pricked your interest and you'd like to know a bit more, then you'd be very welcome to come to that. It's the sort of place where you can hear and ask any question on your mind, or you can just listen. We're all different, aren't we, the way we access information. But we would warmly commend that to you as also the bottom course, which is for people in long-term relationships, if you'd like to come and explore how that relationship can get even better under God's mighty hand, then you're very welcome to our marriage course starting at the end of January. Just if you go inside the page, you'll see there that um, we don't take collections at these services anymore. There are no sort of ghastly bags that sort of wander around and try and make you feel guilty. There is a brass plate at the back should you want to make an offering, but... Uh, it's entirely voluntary. It's just been an absolute delight for us to have you here this afternoon. Indeed, we'd like to give you something as you go. Uh, we've got a copy of a little book uh, over on the, the uh, door that uh, a warden will have, which is uh, uh, how Jesus can bring order out of the mess that sometimes we feel our lives are in and how the messiness of Christmas can be transformed by this Christ child we've been thinking about tonight. So if you'd like to take a copy of that, please do. It's entirely free and comes with our best wishes and prayers. As I said, there are refreshments over in the hall. Please do come and join us if you've got time to. We'd love to see you there. Let's pause and let me lead us in a final prayer. Go in peace and may the wisdom of the wonderful counsellor guide you. The strength of the mighty God defend you. The love of the everlasting Father enfold you, and the peace of the Prince of Peace be upon you. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you all this night and remain with you evermore. Amen. <laughs>